So this presentation today is going to be an overview of basic features of Adobe Captivate 7 and why you would want to use it versus PowerPoint. Presented to you by Rob Roscoe, Ashley Yelverton, and William Crane. In a medium-sized company training meeting, I found it commonplace to have people introduce themselves in the beginning before the actual training starts in order to create a sense of community and ease the individuals into a more encouraging learning environment. At this time, those introductions would occur. The learning objectives for today's presentation are the learner should be able to demonstrate importing a PowerPoint presentation into Captivate. The learner should be able to display the ability to add interactive objects and embed a video into the presentation. The learner should be able to create a basic quiz with Captivate. The learner should be able to de demonstrate the ability to complete a video demo and screen recording. And the learner should be able to publish a finished presentation. Now here's the agenda for today's meeting. As you can see, we've already done introductions and gone over our learning objective for the today. Um, we're going to go over what exactly Captivate is, and we're going to get uh, to demonstrating the learning objectives. So what exactly is Captivate? Captivate is a software that allows you to rapidly create software, software simulations, video demos, slideshows, and many other things that assist you with the development of e-learning courses. Now we're going to take it from PowerPoint into Adobe Captivate. Okay, so now that you understand a couple main uses for Adobe Captivate 7, let's jump right in and start with the learning objectives. So the first learning objective, if you recall, is uh, importing a PowerPoint presentation from Microsoft PowerPoint to Adobe Captivate 7. So this is the, the startup screen that, that you get the first time when you start up, unless you, of course, click this Don't Show Again box when you start it up. But I don't. I like it uh, coming up when I start up. It has good options. So let's let's go off and just uh, import a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I'm importing the last PowerPoint presentation that we were just looking at. Okay, so now you see some options right here. Everything is pretty self-explanatory. You have the aspect ratio of the PowerPoint. You have all the slides. Which ones do you want to include? Which ones do you not want to include? You can check boxes here. You can clear them all. You can select them all. Uh, how you want to advance the slides automatically or on mouse click, depending on what kind of presentation are you giving. Um, the only one that's not really self-explanatory is this high fidelity. Now, high fidelity has to only, it really only applies when you're giving a presentation and you made a presentation in PowerPoint that um, advances by uh, the amount of time a slide is up instead of by click because the metadata associated with the slides carries on into Adobe Captivate 7 and the slides um, go for that amount uh, of time that you clearly stated within PowerPoint. But I, I don't have to do that because all of these slides are advanced by click. So let me just hit OK. And there you have it. Now you have your, uh, your PowerPoint presentation that you made in PowerPoint, but now is in Captivate. It is pretty zoomed in right here because it's at 100% within that small box. So let me just set it at best fit. And now you can see it. All right, now we're going to jump right into the second learning objective. Um, that's going to be learning how to add interactive objects and embedding videos into presentations. I also want to point out to you a couple things um, that I've been learning as we go along. Uh, here up at the top, you see there's different um, themes that you can choose. There's one for uh, that are customized for the size of iPhones. Here's one customized for the size of an iPad. Here's just clouds, green. Let's choose the green one. All right, now as you can see, the theme has changed into green. And to make these themes go away, this button right here shows and hides the themes. Okay, so now what we want to do is add another slide that we'll be able to put content onto it, meaning we'll be able to embed vid videos into it. So to do that, you go over here to the left, right click, and then hit slides, 
sorry. And right here, new slide from, and then now you'll have a bunch of options for what you, exactly you want to do. This content center is a good choice. It uh, allows you to have a big space for your video. All right, and you can see that you can insert video objects here. You can insert images. You can insert text or uh, you know, and animations. Let's put in a, a video. So I have a video about learning Captivate right here. It takes, I, I noticed it takes lots of different file formats. It takes uh, AVI, it takes MP4, it takes uh, flash videos, FLVs. Um, so not just FLVs, even though it says FLV in the example right here. So go ahead and click OK. And the video will display right here. And now you're probably wondering how exactly do I view my PowerPoints? How exactly do I see what um, the end user will be seeing? All you do is go over to this little play button and there's lots of different options for you to do. But, I, but what I like to do is show it in the web browser because it's actually possible to host these projects within a file transfer server and anybody with a computer can be able to access these over a browser so it's good to be able to see exactly how those would look to the end user and here it is loading up it's locally on to my computer even though it is within my web browser it is just on my computer here I click to the next screen right here and now you can see my video All right, and it's as simple as that. The second part of learning objective two had to do with displaying interactive objects. And what we mean by interactive objects is characters. Now, Adobe 7, Adobe Captivate 7 calls them characters. In Adobe Captivate 6, they were called actors. But I'll just show you what they, they are right here. So let's make a new slide. Um, let's have it just be a caption slide and uh, let's put in a little text uh, pay attention to this okay so you really want you really want your users to pay attention to this and you don't know if they will so let's let's put in a, a little eye grabber okay let's put in insert characters now I had to, the first time you bring this up it uh, makes you download them but they're free and they're very easy to download and install and what they are is they're all just uh, little actors you can put on top of the text and it makes the makes the text more eye grabbing so let's put a little guy over here and this guy's huge compared to what what we want him to point to you know like he's huge he's too big he's not pointing in the right area so if you hold down shift and this one in the corner one of these little boxes in the corner you see, you it only it keeps the same aspect ratio when you're resizing it. So let's resize them to something appropriate, and let's have them right under this this word. And there you go. He's displaying it to the users and making it more user friendly. Okay, so the first two learning objectives were about importing a PowerPoint in the Captivate Seven and learning how to embed videos and insert characters for more enhanced e-learning. But why would you want to use Captivate 7? It seems like it's a little bit more complicated to use than PowerPoint for no reason at all. Well, let me show you something that you can do in Captivate 7 that you can't do in PowerPoint. Let's do quizzes now. So if you right click and create a new slide, go to slides, question slide, you see all the different questions you can have in a quiz, multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, etc. Let's just have a multiple choice in a true, false question, okay? Now when you insert new questions, to the right you'll notice that you'll have quiz properties come up. Now that's how you deal with most of the settings for your quizzes. And for example, in this multiple choice question, I can set the answers to two or I can set the answers to four. Let's have four answers. Setting the correct answer would be clicking this dot that's next to next to the answer. So I want the correct answer to be A. 
you double click to edit correct answer. Okay. Let's go back to quiz properties over here. As you can see, you can also shuffle the answers. Uh, you can have partial scores, multiple answers, multi or different point values for different questions. Or you can have even ungraded questions. Just that survey would indicate an ungraded question. But let's have it graded. You can also even have time li limits for each question. You can have, say, five minutes. Five minutes is the default time limit. And a little caption that comes up when you run out of time. But let's not have a time limit. All right, and let's move on to the true false, false question. On the left, you can see your film strip up here. Go to the next slide. Now here's a true false one. Let's make true the correct answer. So let's change the question to true is the correct answer. Let's have everything else for the quiz properties the same as the other question. And let's see how it looks like in a web browser. All right, now we're at the multiple choice question within our web browser. Since I shuffled up the answers, the correct answer was no longer at A anymore. It's now at D. So let me I click that. Let me hit submit. See, correct comes up here. And now I hit next. See how I changed the the question to true is the correct answer. True. Submit. And next. Now Captivate does some math for you. It, in the background, it has um, results on your math. It says what you scored in terms of points out of uh, how many were available, uh, how many questions, how many questions you got right, and what your uh, percent accuracy is. So, and you can actually go back and review the quiz, see what you got right, see what you got wrong. It has a little red X next to what you got wrong when you get it wrong. And you continue on to the slideshow with that button. Now, say you want to record a video of anything and include that in one of your slides, you can do that within Captivate. So to do that, you go to File, Record New Video Demo, and it'll take away the actual Captivate screen and bring up these options. It'll The options will be for the video and then the audio down here. For the video, you have the screen area. You could do custom size, which would bring up you know, this, this red box, and you can uh, do whatever area you want. Or you could do full screen and then just choose what monitor you want. Or you could do what application you want to record, and then you can choose from this drop-down box. But let's just do full screen right now. And... You can also do narration, so I can choose the microphone and talk into the video like I am right now with a different program. And I could also choose system audio, so Captivate would be able to pick up whatever the computer outputs. Now I'm not going to hit record right now because I can't record while I'm already recording, so I'll meet back up with you right after I make a little 5 second recording. Okay, here's the video that I just recorded through Captivate. And as you can see, the file extension at the top here is .cptc, where the file extension for normal projects is cptx. And the only difference in, within uh, Captivate, as you can see, is on the left here, uh, on projects, there's usually the slideshow reel, and now there's no slideshow reel for videos. So to get this video into a project, first we have to publish it as an mp4, and then we can import it into, into the project as an mp4. So let's go to File, Publish. For the preset, select this video Apple iPhone 4, 4S, Apple iPod option. That's actually an MP4. And let's just call it video. And let's just put it into my normal folder, Publish. Now let's go back into our project and embed it as a video object, which we learned how to do earlier. There you go. There's our video. It's as simple as that. So last but not least, the last learning objective for you to do is learn how to actually publish your presentation. So let's click File, 
publish. And there's many publish op publishing options here. You have SWF HTML5 here. You'll be able to view that view that within your browser. Adobe Connect is a good uh, option that you have to use Adobe Connect with, which is another product by Adobe, and that's actually a really good option for if you're video conferencing and you want everybody to take the quiz at the same time. FTP would be good to put it up on a file transfer protocol server and have people take it, have multiple people take it at different locations, but not necessarily at the same time. Here's email if you want to email it to somebody, or you could uh, have it be a Windows executable file, Mac executable file, or just an MP4, or you can even just print it as handouts. But let's do the uh, SWF file so we can view it in my Google Chrome. So I named it Project 2 and I'm putting it in my normal uh, folder. Yes. All right, here's Chrome loading up. Saves as an HTM file, wherever you wanted to save it. I told it to automatically bring it up. So here's, you know, just some of the quiz questions I had. And yeah, very easy. We felt like this project is really beneficial to all of us. We've been reading about this stuff all year in the book, and it was really cool to be able to see it put in practice at the end. And it was definitely harder than I expected um, based off just what I read in the book. Yeah, I mean, uh, I actually used Captivate a lot um, last summer, Captivate 6 though, and um, we would use it with Adobe Connect though, and it was pretty cool to see all the new different features about uh, Captivate 7. Um, it's actually really interesting. I've never even heard of Captivate before this project, so Will kind of filled me in on it, and it, it, was, it was really good learning about something I've never, like an application I've never heard of, so now that I have a little knowledge on that, I can definitely use it in my school and professional career. But overall, it was really um, interesting learning about how to implement in, um, in design a training program.